Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Kakadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathen that look like the heathen. And to the Aquath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you another lesson in truth. Now this image is from the uh, the Chosen Few picnic. But uh, this guy was at the High Park Alumni Picnic 2023 uh, yesterday, which I actually attended for the first time. I've gone to, you know, like my class things. I've never gone to the alumni thing. And it, ha it happens every year. And what they do is they... Uh, they collect money, you know, because they, they have people from all the way from class of 62, all right? And um, so you got all the classes, and they come back to alumni, and they got the DJs and all that, and, you know, and we were the High Park Indians, so, you know, he's, and then I believe this dude's a Gadite anyway, you know, this, this house here dude right here, because he shows up to all the picnics, you know, and his uh, his bees and his, his uh, you know, and his uh, uh, his famous tambourines, what he's known for, Big Swole dude, two of them. Muscle bound, always dancing around, and uh, as of years lately, he's been wearing his headdress, and um, and he was there yesterday up up on the stage with the DJs dancing around in front of the crowd, you know. But nevertheless, that's still just folly in itself. But this video is uh, you know, before I even get into what it's really about, I'm just talking about the foolishness of uh, of what they think they're doing is a good cause because they're trying to. Because what they do is they take the proceeds from the picnic and then it goes toward scholarships for certain certain uh, students coming out of High Park, you know, t and things of that nature to help put them through college and this whole other thing. And, you know, and that's and, you know, you got college students making videos for the last, you know, damn near 10 years telling you how college, college is a scam. All right. And, and a lot of the people hell, my Uber driver the other day had a master's degree and he's driving a damn Uber. Right, you know, he's a he had a master's degree from Pakistan. You know, we had an interest, interesting conversation. I may have to have make a video based upon the conversation that he and I had because he was all pro American until he realized that I didn't give a damn about what was going on. Then he started talking about how he really feels. But then that's a, that's that's another lesson. Uh, but let me go to Jeremiah uh, forty nine. Then I'm gonna get into the meat of this thing. This is Jeremiah 49 and uh, 7, and it reads, Concerning Edom, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, Is wisdom no more in Teman? Is counsel perish from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring a calamity of Esau upon him the time that I, uh, the time that I will visit him. And the Lord is visiting Edom in almost every fashion and way at this point, and his system is collapsing, so... Uh, trying to go to school to get indoctrinated, not get educated, but get to get indoctrinated is really foolishness because they're not teaching you any truth. All right. They're not teaching you truth at all. Uh, matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah uh, 8 and 20. And it reads. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Before I begin this video, I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Akakudash. I want to the other apostles of Great Millstone, move well, teach well. All right, sincere salutations to you, hopeful elect out there who are pushing this word of sincerity and faith. <clears throat> uh, so I just wanted to add in. Uh, Psalms uh, 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. I right, speaking about this, uh, this damn devil. Because, you know, as, you know, the beloved brother Malcolm was uh, speaking that, that precept, uh, popped into my mind, you know. Because they like to lie about Gad. They like to lie about, you know, uh, you know what they did to Gad. Okay, the Gadites. 
okay? If I was you so-called Native Americans, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and get back to uh, playing his video. According to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And so you're being taught lies. And that's why, and the reason why this country is failing is because there's no lights in them, because they don't follow the uh, this, this book. They don't follow the, uh, the Lord, because the Bible actually tells you how to control a population, how to control a country and a kingdom. But yet these people, you know, they, they go against everything that's biblical. So uh, about three and a half, almost four years ago, somewhere around that time, I did a video called My Three Wives, right, on the Malcolm channel, because I'm not sure if I'm going to put this, this video up on Maccabean Spirit or on the Malcolm channel. I'm trying to rotate between them um, uh, because, you know, I got a message from, from YouTube saying that, you know, if pages aren't active, they're going to just delete them. So, you know, because some pages I just kind of let sit and then I'll throw something up on it every now and then. But I'm trying to rotate video, you know, so that's why my videos are, you know, be back and forth between the channels for that reason. I'm trying to keep all of the channels active uh, so they, they won't do that. But nevertheless, the original video was on the Malcolm channel. And, you know, and I talked about three women that, um, that lost their virginity to, virginity to me when I was a very young man, a teenager. And how, you know, had I known and understood uh, the importance of, of virginity and, and, so, and, you know, of a woman and how that's your wife, all right, um, you know, I would have done things differently. But see, we were discontinued from my heritage. And, and actually, two of them, two of my uh, wives were there, all right. Um, one, one who knew she was a Hebrew, all right, she knew before I knew. She actually... Uh, you know, came from, her mother was one of two wives, all right, all right, because that was, uh, you know, she had a lot of sisters and brothers, and then she had a whole second family from her father's other wife, all right, so it was a lot of them, okay, and, um, you know, so I, I talked with, to her for a moment, briefly for a moment, because she's already had an opportunity and her chance, matter of fact, she called me about four or five years ago and told me that she was you know, looking at all the things that was going on in the world, she was like, okay, I'm ready to be, she knew I was going out, out, out on the highways and byways, and she was like, okay, I'm ready to be your other wife now, you know, how's your wife going to react to that? And I was like, well, uh, she's probably not going to be too happy about it, it's, it's probably not going to go over well, but uh, we'll talk about it, and of course, you know, she just ran back into the world and went back with her, uh, you know, See, now she's married to some other dude, so she's no no concern. I'll see her on the other, on, on the other side. Now this other one, the, the uh, you know, she she was full of questions, and she was just so ecstatic to see me because I knew she had been asking about me because I've been told by people who who I knew that went there, and um, not even thinking about it, um, you know. But she just has such an intense memory on stuff. And she brought back a lot of memories. And, you know, and it was it was very emotional. I'm not going to sit up and pretend that I wasn't very happy to see her. Because, you know, she hugged me and we just stood there for about, you know, two or three minutes in an embrace. All right. And then, you know, then we started, you know, chatting it up and talking. And then I went over and she was class 88. So I went over to where my tent, where my, so I left and told her I would come back. So I went over to, to, to the, where my people were, you know. And, um. You know, because I was a senior when she was a freshman, all right? So, uh, so anyway, I ended up breaking bread with one of, you know, because, you know, a couple people that went to school with me also went to grammar school with me, with kids with me. So I'm breaking bread with them, you know, on the truth, all right? Oh, yeah, and I have to, and I forgot to mention, one of the first things out of her mouth was that she said, oh, so I hear that you're a Hebrew Israelite. All right, she didn't say black. She said, I hear, I hear that you're a Hebrew Israelite. And, you know, and I just kind of looked at her. And I smiled and I said, well, so are you, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you accept it or not. And I said, and damn near practically everybody here is. All right. Um, but I said, well, we'll talk about that. And, um, and, you know, we exchanged information and, I, you know, I gave a card and we exchanged numbers and all that. I said, we'll chat and all that stuff, you know, and, and um, you know, and I told, told her she to come by the studio and, you know, 
um, and, and all that. And anyway, I went back over and I started prophesying with, you know, with Steve. Steve was full of questions. Steve follows me on, uh, he follows me on, on, uh, TikTok. All right. And so, you know, he's full of all these questions and we're going back and forth and he's got one foot in the world and, and, you know, and one foot in the truth and, uh, you know, and, um, and, and I just told him, you know, you're going to have, you got, it's going to come a time where you're going to have to stop riding the fence and then stop going into your, you know, let me grab a scripture on that. Stop leaning into your own understanding, man. All right. Cause, uh, he even told me how he'd be putting people up on my videos. Um, you know, he was having these debates with people and that's kind of how it starts, you know, cause a man has to be fully persuaded in his own mind, you know, and, and Steve was like a brother. I mean, we grew up together, you know through grade school and, and high school, you know, we, we were tight. But anyway, uh, this is Proverbs 3 and 5, and it reads, Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not into thy own understanding. So, you know, you can't you can't lean into your own understanding, all right? So after being with Steve, time is just flying by, and I'm like, man, I got to get out of here. I got to go. But, you know, but the, it, I kept prophesying. And um, so time went by to the point it was like, you know what, I might as well just stay here. So I sent, you know, I sent a message to just come scoop me up. <laughs> um, and, uh, but meanwhile, I, 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 I started talking to Betty again. Because she looked up and saw me. Because, um, you know, the, the, the DJ started getting down and I kind of went to the, you know, close to the dance floor. I didn't get out there and dance, but I was just vibing the music. And I turned around and there she was staring at me. And she was like, you're still here. And so, you know, so we started talking and after that, we just didn't separate. All the way up until the brother came to get me, um, you know, she, she was just right by my side. And so we went and sat down on the side of the hill, just like we used to when we were, you know, when we were kids. And we were just talking and she was like, remember we used to do this? And I was like, yeah. And I said, I remember we used to sit out across the street from the school in the park on a little hill in front of the school, you know, and I would lay my head in her lap, you know, and we would just, you know, we would just talk and hang out. Of course, we didn't do that, you know, but we were sitting there on the hill together. And, um, and I'm just breaking down all these, you know, these things to her. And so let me go to Jeremiah 17 and four. All right. Because she was like, yeah, you know, you, you, you know, our plan was for you when you finished, when I finished uh, high school, you were supposed to come back from the Marine Corps and marry me. That's what, and, we, and that's what we were talking about when we were kids, but you know, and, but we were, we were young, you know, we were young, but let me go, let me go to Jeremiah 17 and four. And, and it reads, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. And so I broke down to her how we've been separated from our heritage, and how when we were in school together, I had a, you know, my teacher, Taki Rattan, and my, uh, my, my, uh, in my Afro-American studies, uh, how he, you know, when he walked into the classroom, he pushed, I never, she never knew this story, and how he pushed our, our book on, off his desk onto the floor and went to his bag and opened up his own book, you know, and I believe that that was through the spirit of the Lord that made him do that because it was a message to me. Nobody else in that room but just to me, and I believe that wholeheartedly. But he started proving through the books that he had, through artifacts in history, that the Israelites was indeed a dark race of people, that they were not so-called white people. All right. So I was explaining to her how to, how I had a problem with the churches, uh, you know, um, that whole you know from that point on because no one was bringing it out, and I was like, well, if they're gonna lie to us about. You know the Israelites. What are they, what else are they gonna lie about? Because I knew that the Lord was a was a you know was from a tribe of Judah. I understood that he was a Jew, you know, um, according to what they say. But he was a, he was a Jew from the tribe of Judah, and and that's what got Taki Rattan fired because that subject matter came up in class, and he said, yeah, well that would mean the the yeah the, the Jesus Christ, the image that you use, that's a false image. He's he's really a, a man of color. He's a he's a so called black man, and you know the girls went home and. And some of the girls went home and some of the mothers came up there complaining about, you know, this man teaching my children. He's supposed to be teaching them history. The Bible is history. You know, anyway, Taki Rattan got fired, but he changed my life. All right. He really did. And um, 10 years later, 
I ended up going to a church with the Manasseh chick who happened to be there. I saw her too. <laughs> uh, and because um, she was from uh, 89, so she was there after I left. All right. Um, but anyway, um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I remember going to this church and this man started teaching that the Israelites was a dark race of people, that they were a black people. And, you know, under that 501c3 charter, you can't teach about ethnicity. He ended up losing his church. So, you know, I'm like, damn, it's, it's something serious to this whole Israelite thing. Every time you bring this out, this, this, this Israelite thing comes up about them not being white, but being so-called black people. All right. Uh, still at the time, I didn't know that that would, you know, if they had anything to do with us, you know, but that, you know, but I knew that they weren't white, you know, and I didn't know the, the whole difference between black and African and all that. I had, I hadn't come into that knowledge, although I was suspicious that, you know, that so-called Africans were, were, didn't really like, you know, black people in America and they were kind of different and act different and stuff like that. But not, you know, knowing the breakdown, I'm explaining that to her. She's like, yeah, they don't. And they, this, that, and the other. And so she's really listening. And, you know, so I'm breaking this down to her. She, you know, she never knew these things. So I, so I read to her Deuteronomy 28 and 68. You know, so let me go to that. And that's not something that women are used to, especially women. <clears throat> In uh, Deuteronomy 28, 68 is one of the um, uh, uh, main staples, uh, so to speak, speaking on, you know, us specifically, speaking on the Israelites, you know, and and, and the, uh, uh, the characteristics of what the Israelites uh, went, went through, and more specifically us uh, coming here by, by slave ship. Okay, the is the Israelites were the ones who are in, who were and are in slavery. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. <clears throat> and it's beautiful <clears throat> just hearing uh, the brother's testimony. You know, and and you know each, each brother has uh, you know a testimony where they'll they'll speak on how. Uh, even before we came into the truth, there were little instances where little bits and pieces of information were brought out that eventually, you know, the Lord leads you uh, to the truth. So, you know, it's a beautiful testimony. And actually, you know, so-called believe in the Bible, believe in the Lord. So a man did just start, you know, breaking out the scriptures and reading them with understanding like that. But this is a... Deuteronomy 28 and 68, and I read her some of the curses and asked her, you know, honestly, what are, you know, who, who does that fit? And she could, that's, that's got to be us. But anyway, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 68, and it reads, and Yahweh shall bring, and I explain to her the name. You know, I have my, my necklace that I often wear almost daily that has the name of the Lord on it. Oh, not to mention, there was another brother there, too, from one of the other camps. He was with his wife, you know, uh, his wife was an alumni. So he was there with his wife. So, you know, me and that brother broke bread and she saw that and that interaction and us, you know, communicating in Hebrew. She was just wooed by that whole thing. All right. But anyway, um, it says, and Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way I spake unto thee. Thou shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies as bond men and bond women. And no one shall buy you and no one shall redeem you. No one's going to save you. This is the prophecy of what was going to happen to the Israelites that they try to negate and get around or make excuses or even try to pretend that it didn't happen. This was a prophecy that had to happen to the Israelites. And, you know, and that never happened to the Jewish people. It never happened to them. As a matter of fact, when you do your research, you find out that they owned the majority of the slave ships that took these people into, you know, so how can you be the victim and the villain? You know, you can't be both. You got to be one or the other. All right. So they were the villains in this case. That's just that's just what it is. So um, so you know the conversation can you know uh, uh continues on, and um and she said, well I know that there there are, are scriptures that they removed from the Bible. So I broke down to her the apocrypha and what it meant. 
how the apocalypse. She said it has a name, and so I, I, I explained to her, and I explained to her what the name uh, even meant. So that means the Lord knew, you know, for it to be called the apocrypha, you know, because apocrypha meant means to be sent away, hidden. So they hid it, and I said and that's the problem with Christianity. They have to, in order for Christianity to work, the apocrypha had to be removed. That's why the Bible Destruction Group uh, went to remove it. All right. So when you get to the New Testament, it says there's no difference between Greek and a Jew. Then that can be misconstrued as oh, well, to the Lord is for everybody now. It's not just the Israelites anymore, and that's not true because Acts six and one, and Acts nine and and twenty uh, twenty nine. Uh, Kind of, matter of fact, I'll let me read Acts 6 and 1. Because they both kind of say the same thing, roundabout, roundabout way. But Acts 6 and 1 reads, And in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. All right? And um, then I broke down to her that those and that, that word Grecian and showed it to her that that word what meant Hellenist. Which, which was a Greek-speaking Jew. Now, they could have just wrote in the Greek-speaking Jews, but they didn't write that. And that's not what they teach. So they make it seem as, you know, you see sort of the falsehood and, and doctrine that they purposely propagated by just by the way that they worded things. So it's like I explained to her every place where it says Lord, all capital letters, and then I showed it to her that it said Yahweh. They were deliberately trying to, and then they changed it to Yahweh. You know, that they did everything in their power to hide this truth. All right. And that how our people will steal into the Greek fashion. Speaking about these Grecians, as I pointed out, all the uh, the bros that were out there, you know, and all, all the omegas and, you know, in the different fraternities and and, 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 uh, and and sororities that were out there. I said, our people still are cleaving unto. And this, and then not even five le five minutes later, one of, one of my guys that came up with me, who's big time bros, big time Q dog, Q lyrious. Uh, uh, he walked right up on me. <laughs> you know, he, he stopped and embraced me. He was out there uh, promoting his ice cream stuff, but he's also alumni, and he knew her too. You know, because he remember when we we were together. Everyone did. You know, and um, you know, so <laughs> you know he and, and it's the Lord. It's funny how the Lord sends you examples right on time. You know, <laughs> Yaya walks up. You know, but anyway. Um, and then I explained to her heaven was going to be here on earth and that I've been that our people have been Hellenized and, and I said look here are three of the reasons that, that uh, um, Christianity removed the, the Bible alright and number one I said uh, God the Lord all capitals Yahweh he doesn't love everyone alright Without the apocrypha, you can you, they were able to easily push and preach that teach that that God loves everybody doctrine, because they'll without the understanding of of you know of the what happened during the Grecian captivity, they jump right to Rome and then try to understand everything without with that missing with that four hundred year history of of the Grecian captivity being removed, you know all of a sudden you know there's no difference between Jew and Greek they don't understand. The Hellenization and the and, and the and the Israelites become becoming Greekish, you know, m probably half or more than half of them, all right. Versus the ones who who cleaved unto their heritage. So the ones who cleaved unto their heritage had enmity or problems with the ones who were who were following after Greekish fashion, all right, and looked at them as a person of non grata and looked at them as if they were not Israelites anymore, if they were not Hebrews anymore. And then the Lord came on the scene and his disciples and Paul was like, no, there should be because among them are some of the Lord's elect. And that's what this is all about. All right. I explained that to her. I said they also removed, you know, they removed the, uh, the, love, the Lord's bloodline connection to the house of David to present universal love. And I said, and, and so well, how did they do that? By, well, by giving by disconnecting him from the house of David, by disconnecting him from Joseph and saying that an angel impregnated Mary when Joseph did. All right, because it gives you his bloodline, his from sperm from father to father, from seed to seed, all the way up to Joseph to him. And then the Lord tells you in, um, I believe it's Revelations twenty two and sixteen, <laughs> the very end. You know, <laughs> uh, twenty two and sixteen, I do believe. Call the law. Yep, and it says, uh, 
I, Yahweh Shai, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star. So the Lord tells you himself, he is the offspring of David, just like it tells you in the Bible. Isaiah the 11 chapter, you know, it, I mean, it just tells you, you know, in uh, Luke, the third chapter, Matthew, the first chapter is breaking down the, the, the sperm line. He is of the house of David and you cannot have the kingdom of heaven without the house of David. The two go hand in hand. So she's just sitting there tripping, you know, because she had just professed she's a, uh, a Christian. She's still a Christian. And, and, and I said, well, you know, and I, I told her what we all say. Everybody's a Christian until the scriptures come out. I said, yeah, I was once called myself a Christian, too. All right. Um, and then number three is that they he hit the Edomite connection to today's whites. And I explained to her, you know, in 1681, the Edomites began calling themselves, uh, uh, you know, white. All right. Caucasian and white. So, you know, every every so many hundred years, the Edomites changed their their, uh, you know, their name. Because they've been trying to run from the fact that they're that vagabond. That's the, uh, uh, you know, that's a uh, fugitive from justice. Let me see if I can find that real quick and close it out. Because the Lord said he would have enmity with uh, uh, Amalek from generation to generation. But Christianity has taught that the Edomites had done away with. So they did all these convenient things um, to hide themselves. But they can't. All right. They can't hide themselves. They're, they're exposed now. You know, Jeremiah 49. Um. Yeah, this is uh, Genesis um, 4 and 14. Let me go ahead and highlight that. I should have been had that highlighted. And 12. I read them both. I started 12. And it reads, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth uh, 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 the, her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond, shalt thou be in the earth. And, and, that, and the earth doesn't yield forth its strength to them today. That's why they have problems growing food and why they use they have they use all these chemicals and all this other stuff and have to uh, uh you know and they've messed up the food with GMOs and all that other mess and pesticides because the earth just refuses to yield its strength to them. All right, and so they try to chemically uh, do it and and basically everyone's being is getting sick as a result of it. And it says, "Behold, uh, uh, verse fourteen, Genesis four and fourteen. Behold, thou has been driven, uh, Salakia. Behold, thou has driven me out." This day from the face of the earth and from the and from thy face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So, you know, uh, Esau Edom is that fugitive and vagabond from earth that everyone has found out. The Lord has removed that 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 veil, that covering cast. Matter of fact, let's make that the last scripture. All right. Let's read that one in. I close this thing out. Um, this Isaiah 25 and 7. And it reads, And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Beautiful. All right, so. We're going to go ahead and end the video with this uh, precept. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, right? Which is the self-proclaimed white man, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called power, or that is worship. So that he, as power, sitteth in the temple of power, showing himself that he is power, which is blasphemy of, of the Holy Spirit. All right. You, you have stolen the identity, you know, of the Lord. You've stolen the identity of the angels. Okay. You know, you, you, you basically made, you know, yourself. Okay. Uh, to uh, to be the angels, you made yourself 
you know, to to be the, uh, uh, you know, children of, of light, man. All right, children of the most high, which really you have a damn devil. All right, so Lord's will, <clears throat> you are edified. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashim, Ha, Rekah, Kodash. Devon, Mr. the Elder, Apostle, Great Millstone, who rule well, teach well. And this is your salutations to your hopeful elect out there. And, you, hey, you know, your brothers, keep your heads up, man. We're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, different interactions uh, from, pe you know, from people, you know. And the spirit is really shining, you know. You know, and like the scriptures say, you know, wisdom uh, uh, maketh a man's face to shine. Roughly paraphrasing, so Lord's will, the Lord keeps working with us, you know, in these times, man. Because <clears throat> all hell's going to be breaking out very soon. Okay, through the spirit, we can feel it. Show one.